Jeff, you write a piece that's on CNNPolitics.com. I urge everyone to take a peek at it this morning uh, that says aides were told essentially get back as of this morning because this could happen any second. As we sit right here? Any second, any day more likely. Probably not any second. But the reality is this is all coming together. They signed the lease on Friday, which means they have 15 days to act on this presidential campaign. But really more importantly, what's happening is how they're going to present her as a candidate. We're finding out that there are going to be no big rallies, no big crowds, really trying to make this smaller, make this one-on-one -on -one conversation, try and reintroduce her. But the big question is, can someone like this so famous, so well-known, actually be introduced the second time around. That's their burden. Right, someone who has a 100% name identity, right. essentially, with the American people. Let me read, to your point, let me read one uh, sentence from your article, or a couple sentences from your article here. As she and a coterie of advisors prepare to launch her presidential campaign, their work is guided by a new set of humble principles. No big crowds, few soaring rallies, less mention of her own ambitions, and extinguish the air of inevitability propelling her candidacy. The air of ine inevitability as a lot of Democrats have been complaining, where are you? Come out to Iowa and do small house parties, fine. Come to New Hampshire, do small events, fine. Martin O'Malley, Jim Webb will be in Iowa this week. And yet, among Democrats, there is an air of inevitability, excuse well, me. Well, until she has a viable challenger, there is going to be an air of inevitability. Right. Because, I mean, when you have someone like Martin O'Malley, who has been slowly presenting himself as a challenger, he still hasn't given a reason why O'Malley rather than Clinton. Right. And that that's their challenge, to actually present a good a good challenge to her because otherwise they're just the sacrificial lamb, the, the, the person that, that's sort of going up against Hillary just for kicks. And, and it's interesting because a lot of Democrats complain, let's see a race. I was up in Boston last week, even Mayor Marty Walsh, who's likely to support Hillary Clinton, was like, let's not have a coronation, let's have a fight, let's test her essentially, get the rust off in a good campaign. And yet, uh, listen to Gary Hart, this is in a political interview published on Sunday. I'm Gary Hart, the former you know, Democratic senator and presidential candidate, I'm now told the Clinton campaign intends to raise one billion dollars. Now that ought to frighten every American. If you've got to have a billion dollars to run for president, how many people can do that? Only the Clintons and the Bushes and one or two others, uh, not Jim Webb or Martin O'Malley or Bernie Sanders. That's right. I mean, a billion dollars sounds like a lot of money. Of course it is. But now any modern day presidential campaign is going to be a billion dollars. But the, the reality is what her advisors are finding when they're going out there, they're visiting Iowa, they're visiting New Hampshire, they're finding that some Democrats are not um, necessarily all that excited just to see her. They want a campaign and a race. And some Clinton advisors actually wish there was more of a challenger. It'd be easier to run against some person than kind of this, you know, um, mythic figure out there right. in the party. It'd be easier to run against Elizabeth Warren, you know, rather than the idea of Elizabeth Warren. And we don't think she's running, obviously. But uh, the Clinton uh, campaign, she's going to be running against herself, first and foremost. Right. That's what they know. Um, you know but she, it's time to get in it, they believe. You particularly you hear concern among progressives, because progressives sure. think that they're going to be left behind, um, which they've sort of been by this president in some ways. And I think there is, there is that, that frustration there. But as you say, there is a mythic figure. There isn't anyone to really be their champion right now. All right, we're about to get into the Republicans. Primaries are always about ideology. And if you don't have it, that's how she got beat in 2008. Barack Obama got to her left on the Iraq war issue. Uh, the question is, will these, these issues emerge? Uh, one other thing before we move on, though. She has an appointment yet to be scheduled, at least as far as we know, with the Select Committee on Benghazi. Uh, they want to interview her in private first, then there'll be public testimony. The biggest issue is there, why did she wipe her private email server? Uh, did the people inside the campaign think that that's just a speed bump and they get through it, or do they think it's potentially a danger zone? The people inside her orbit believe that this ultimately will be a good thing for her. Um, they say she will only appear publicly, will only testify publicly, and they believe that running against House Republicans, against this Congress, is a good thing. But we still don't know what's in all those emails, and they don't necessarily either. So you know, they can say it's a speed bump, but we'll see. I think we still have to see how she presents herself in that hearing. Right. As a public, as a public official with a lot of experience in this realm of secrecy, transparency, and the like, uh, I think she still has a lot of explaining to do. It's right. how you completely wipe without having an outside source say, okay, you've given the government everything it deserves, now you can wipe it. Without a second opinion on that one, she still has some answering to do there.